Okay, William Nylander and Willie signing Toronto. And that's the question. Uh, will he sign in Toronto uh, and resign and continue to play there? Or will he get traded? The amount of time that's taken at this point and the sort of standoff we've had between Carl Dubas and Nylander and, his rep- and the representatives of both sides, I'm, I'm seeing a trade here. But now you've got to try and engineer a trade that's favourable um, for Toronto and technically favourable for, for the other team. Nylander is a star player. Um, very good forward. Uh, you know, Toronto have got themselves in this position because the, firstly, they've allowed the situation to drag and secondly, the salary cap has caught up with them. Um, whether Lou Lamarello was probably the better GM, well, time will tell, he helped rebuild the side. Uh, the way that Toronto kept some of their prospects out of the lineup, they've all got to be signed at the same time now. Um, it's it's difficult. Uh, you've, got, you've got Matthews, Marner, Tavares, getting Tavares in on big money as well. That proved a distraction. They put a lot of effort in getting Tavares to sign. They haven't focused on re-signing necessarily players that were already there. Um, so is Carl Dubas the right man to be GM? Is he mishandling his situation? First question. Second question. How much does Nylander want? He hasn't played now for a couple of months, so his value is diminishing daily. He's, his value is ticking away. Um, he's going to be offered less and less, and he can only ask less and less because he hasn't played for two months now because of this dispute. Um, yes, he's played well since he's been at Toronto. I would say eight million, eight and a half. But the longer this drags out, the less he's worth. He hasn't played this season. He hasn't shown anything. So therefore, on the trade block, he's getting less valuable as time ticks by, um, which is a sticky, again a problem for Toronto because if they want to strengthen the defence core, for example, or get another goaltender in, for example, they're going to have to act now. Um, if they want to sign him, they're running out of time. The longer they leave it the less likely a deal gets done and, you know, he doesn't play for the rest of the season. Uh, there is a rule, I think, in place, a league rule in place, that if he isn't signed by, I think, the first week of December, he can't play for the rest of the season. So that, again, ruins his trade value and will put a spanner in the works for any contract negotiations. So they have to do a deal soon. I think he's most likely to get traded. I think he most likely ends up in Carolina. If not Carolina, Vegas. Um, possibly Florida. Arizona have the cap space, but I'm running out of teams to list that actually would actually have the, f- the space to sign him on a long-term deal. I can see a short-term deal as well, uh, where, again, in the summer, he's a free agent and he can go wherever he wants, probably back to Toronto. But cap space is what's causing a lot of problems here. I think they've mismanaged this situation. The fact that players have contract negotiations that do drag out is nothing new. It's not a new thing, but this one is under the spotlight because the amount of time they put into getting Tavares, the amount of money they've spent to get Tavares, and their lack of cap space, and how they've handled the cap space. And this is a problem they're going to find more and more as time goes on with the amount of uh, good young players they have. They stockpile prospects, they put them in the minors, they all came up at the same time, which is a great thing if you want to win now. Um, the cap issues are going to be a problem for Toronto for the next few years going forward. They're going to have to juggle a lot of players around and try and keep a lot of players happy, which is very, very difficult. Um, if this is 2002, 2003, this whole situation, there's not a situation because neither has been signed or traded and done. Um, so Toronto are finding the cap is is starting to bite. And I fear that Toronto could end up like the Red Wings with issues a long way down the line as well with a lot of players on bad contracts that are eating to the salary cap. We'll see how Carl Dewars deals with things. I think Nylander gets traded, but they are running out of time and his value decreases day by day. That ticks by that no deal is done or no trade is done because of his lack of playing time this season. Um, So we'll see what happens. We'll see where he ends up. We'll see if he signs. Um, And there we go. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, If you are a Maple Leafs fan, what do you you reckon is going to happen? And if you're an NHL fan in any capacity, what do you think happens? I'd like to hear from you guys. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe, place your comments below, and I'll have some more videos for you soon.